Hello, hi guys, my name is Harwansh and welcome back to my the tutorial on Microsoft and Defender for Endpoints. And in this video, we are going to set up the Defender for Endpoint features, how we can enable or disable the Defender features. So let me start this video. So in this video, we are going to cover up to understand the Defender features, enabling or disabling the features, and then we'll apply the policy to the test machine and then we'll test it so let's move it to the lab session now here is some either uh, Intune console as uh, you know this uh, defender policies are controlled by the MEM console so let's go to the defender sorry the endpoint security and here is the antivirus so uh, here let's create the policy and uh, select the Windows 10 11 and the servers and now uh, here is the three option Microsoft Defender antivirus exclusions so in my last video I showed you how you can create the exclusions for your the endpoint and now today we are going to cover up this feature Microsoft Defender antivirus and let's create this policy so now here let me give you the F E A T U R features. F E A T U features enable or or anything whatever we want we can set up it. Actually, E button is not working in my the. Okay, so let me click on next. So now here is defender uh, so this is the column is given name as a defender group inside that we have the allow archive scanning so what it will do uh, if you want to enable the scanning of the archive you can do this and allow the scan for the archive files so if any file is archive and you want to uh, enable the scanning for that archive files so you can allow it or or you can the turn off so let me allow this allow the behavior monitor so uh, if you want to allow the behavior monitor you can select it here uh, allow the cloud protection if you want to learn it more you can click on the iconic button so it will give you the more details so let us allow the the cloud protection as well allow the email scanning so email scanning let me explain it if you want to uh, if you want to scan your the emails uh, like uh, in an attachment if there is any suspicious attached over the email uh, then that email can be scanned by the defender so you can do the email scanning as well so let's allow this allow the full scan on the map drive so if you want to scan your the map drive full scanning for the map drive so you can enable this feature as well so allow the scan for the removal dri drives like the pen drive and all if you want to explain it uh, scan it so you can set up it here and the similar way IPS the intrusion prevention policy so let's allow this allow scanning for the all downloaded file as a attachment so uh, all attached uh, download the file in an attachment so this feature will work in uh, IO AVP uh, protection functionality allow the real-time monitoring yes we can allow this and allow the scanning the network file if you want to allow the network file scanning so you can do it allow the script scanning suppose we are uh, um, uh, pushing any of the script on the uh, end user device so it can um, scan your the script uh, so but whenever we are creating the script we are writing it on so it's not recommended to scan this script why because sometimes we are writing the codes and if there's some uh, some um, code is detected by the defender and uh, it will block or the quantine that particular script so let us not to allow this allow the user UI access so uh, that is also not recommended if you want to uh, configure it you can allow this now average CPU load factor so if you want to set up the law uh, your the CPU utilization factor then you can mention it here by default value is a 
so check the signature before running the scan so if you want to check the virus definition you can set up that so how it will work if the virus definition is not latest then it will not scan the file so first you need to update your defender antivirus and then it will allow for the scanning so cloud block level if you want to uh, set up it's like high uh, high plus zero tolerance so let us set up the zero tolerance cloud extended timeout or the day of the retention clean mal malware policy if you want to set up it and here is the iconic button so how you can set up it so zero uh, by default is a zero which will keep the item in a quarantine and does not the automatically remove them so let us keep it there so uh, if any file is getting quarantine so it won't delete automatically and then you can collect that file from the quarantine folder so disable the catch up full scan if you want to disable the uh, the full scan you can do it from here or disable the catch a quick scan or enabling the cpu so you can perform all these uh, settings you can enable or the disable which is required according to your organization so exclude the extension so these uh, these steps same i explained in my in my the last video uh, for the exclusions like you can uh, exclude your the extension path and the process if you want pau protections pau protection is a potential unwanted the application so if you want to block it so you can block that you can enable that feature so pau protection off or the pau protection detect item are blocked this shows in the history along with the other threads so let us enable the pau uh, protection so real time uh, scanning direction so uh, how how the direction will work the monitor all files monitor the incoming files or the monitor outgoing files so basically we used the monitor all the files so real time scanning is something when any file is executing or the under process so defender can scan that uh, real time uh, uh, scan that file during the real time protection so scan parameters uh, like you can do the quick scanning or the full scanning whichever you like so schedule the quick scan time at what time your the quick scan will work so if you have uh, this is like a your the time how, how you want to mention it so here is the example has given so if you have like a 60 that is means is 1 am or uh, if you have like a 1 uh, 1380 equal to 11 am 11 pm set up the value or the default is 120 uh, 120 in the sense is a 2 am so uh, let's let's start up with the by default so this is our the uh, quick scan time schedule the scan day when uh, on the which day you want to schedule your the scanning so let us schedule in the friday so why because friday will be having the very less work and we can uh, schedule on the friday so schedule scan time at what time again the time is came so you can set up you can understand the code is like zero it's a 12 am and the 60 in the sense is uh, uh, 1 pm and the value is the uh, 120 it's a 2 am and if it goes to like uh, 1380 then it will be a 11 pm and now here is a signature update uh, fallback order so if you want to uh, change it your the signature update uh, like uh, how the signature update will download so if you want to change the path so you can mention it here so let us use the default only and the signature update file filter source so if you want to change the uh, the source path so when in when we are using this if we want to store our uh, signature file in some places so from there it can be pick up the file and it can update it but the very few organization are using this option uh, everyone is using the download from this directly microsoft so submit the sample constant 
uh, it is a like if you want to submit a uh, um, consent so you can select it here always prompt save sample automatically never send it or the sample so let's not configure this now disable the local admin merge so this is like when you are disabling the local account uh, so you can use this option allow on the access protection so these all these are the uh, sorry features are there to enable or disable to control your the defender clients and now let's go to the next and if you want to uh, assign the scope if your your organization are using some scope logics so you can select here the scope and now if you want to add the scope so you can add it here i have not created any scope and now here you can go for the attachment uh, assignment sorry so now you can assign this if you created any of the corrupt wherever you want to test it so now let me assign this policy i create a corrupt name is the policy and now let me select this and assign this policy so now this feature will be enabled to if we added uh, any of the machines under that corrupt and uh, that we can test it so uh, the policy will apply to the or the test machine and after the test you can move it to the production so once you've done it if you want to check the um, your the settings and whatever you applied it you can click here and then you can get the status so once it applied you can get it a report under the success if there is any problem you can get it under this column so you can run this report and you can get it the details so if you have like you want to see how many device got the policy or where it implemented so you, so you can go here and you can uh, get it the report so guys uh, thank you for watching this video see you soon in my next video